My guest tonight, a very funny comedian who was a cast member on Saturday Night Live and starred in Weeds and Man with a Plan. Uh, don't tr turn back, turn back. Please welcome our good friend, Kevin Nealon. Let's <laughs> You're so Don't you hate when people do that? You're so needy as a performer, you were turning back to the camera during your introduction. I'm, I'm, you were about to be on a single, but you had to be part of that too, didn't you? You just Conan, had to. Conan, I have been doing this for many years. I'm experienced. I know where the cameras are at mm -hmm. all times. Yeah. I know there's one right behind me. Watch. Yeah. And there's one over here. Yeah. And guess what? What? I also have a hidden camera right here that you don't know about. Oh, nice. So you're, yeah. you're filming this yourself. Yes, yes. I have another show that I do. It's called Conan's Show, mm -hmm. by me. <laughs> <laughs> it's footage you take when you're a guest on my yeah. show, and then you put this out online? I gotta tell you something, you got a minute? Uh, I yes, I have a minute. I was chuckling as I was driving down here tonight because mm -hmm. I remember I was at a party, either you had it or I had it, or maybe it was even on your show. Mm -hmm. All my memories of you just kind of blend together. I get it, so this clearly this event meant a lot to you. Not really. I didn't think so. And um, I was wearing a V-neck sweater uh -huh. without a T-shirt underneath it, and it triggered you for some reason. It did. You wouldn't let go of that for months after that. Whenever I saw you, so I can't believe you wore the V-neck without the T-shirt under it. Yeah. I don't know what the trigger was or why that was. You have very this. You're a very good-looking guy. Very, very good-looking. But this area of your body not so great. That's my and best quality. No, and you, what I don't like is when a guy wears a low cut V and no t shirt, it looks cheesy to me. Even with the does. chiseled pecs. One peck was chiseled, the other was. No, I chiseled both of them <laughs> before I got there. <laughs> I just made sure they were both chiseled. You know, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I'm going to compliment you at the very top of this interview, and I'm going to say this with great sincerity, and you're going to have a hard time with it. Well, look at me in the eye then when you say it. I'm looking you in the eye and I'm right. telling you that you are one of, in my opinion, one of the great all-time talk show guests. You're fantastic. You think differently. Mm -hmm. You always come with amazing jokes. You're very funny. Uh, and you have been a blessing to all the different shows I have done. And I just wanted to compliment you up front because I'm gonna grow irritated with you very soon. <laughs> and uh, I'm probably going to just cut out of the interview fast. So I wanted to get that out of the way I up top. That. And I appreciate that. And all my writers throughout the years, whenever you're on the show, my writers don't watch the show. They've got better things to do than watch I don't that crap. <laughs> they gather around the sets when you're on. Is because, that right? Yes, they consider uh, you an absolute comedy master. And I'm, I'm just uh, delighted that you could be here as we sort of wind this nightly thing down. Well, you have always, and I'm not just saying this because you said something nice to me, mm -hmm. um, you have always been a pleasure to be on your, sh it has always been a pleasure to be on your show because you are always open to my ideas, trying different things, right. different bits, and then you have good writers and you yourself contribute, you add on to it, and I always walk away thinking that was funny. And in my um, highlight reel, mm -hmm. Your show is like right up there. What do you mean right up? Don't say right up there. <laughs> no, it's right up there. And right, that's but, a compliment. But that could mean me. right up there with all the other shows you do. That, it's, it's vague enough to, le to, to leave me wondering, what does he mean by right up what there? What I mean is this, and it's a compliment. I threw your name in the hat with some of the other talk show hosts. <laughs> and the hat that's right up there on the top shelf. <laughs> It's top shelf, is what I'm saying. It's your top shelf. <laughs> you know, um, this is going to be a spontaneous chat. There's no prepared material here. We never prepare. We're like magicians. We're like magicians. No, magi magicians prepare. That was a bad analogy it's on my terrible. part. It's terrible. That was a bad analogy. That's the worst analogy. Magicians. <laughs> Andy, who prepares more than a magician? I, I, I mean, you're both creepy, if, if that's what you're talking about. <laughs> We don't prepare at all. We're like surgeons. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I do want to talk to you about some things that have been going on in your life that, that sound uh, what, like major events. For example, you got robbed recently. Your home was robbed. It's funny how you would know that. <laughs> but I didn't tell anybody. <laughs> I got some great stuff from your house. That's what I meant to say. But no, uh, this is a true story. You and I are friends, and you told me that you got robbed recently. Yeah. You and your lovely wife were robbed. That sounds terrible. Well, we weren't home at the time. Right. So it wasn't that terrible. Yeah. We, um, 
we were gone for three months last December. I know that sounds like one month, but I'm talking about the two additional months after December as well. Okay. So that, let's recap, that's three months. Okay. And God, you made that unnecessarily some, complicated. <laughs> let me finish. <laughs> and somebody broke into our house. Uh -huh. And I don't think that this person had any remorse at all because my wife is into positive affirmation and signs. She has signs all over the house like, you're exactly where you're meant to be. You deserve what you have, you know. No risk, no gain. Mm -hmm. So this person, I'm sure, didn't, you know, this kind of just supported his actions. Yeah. Um, you think that this robber broke into your house and saw you're exactly where you need to be and thought, I, within my rights. Exactly. No, no risk, no gain. Read all these signs. Your wife helped this criminal steal from you. It might have been my wife. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so what was taken? Well, the, when the guy broke in, um, he got cut on the window, so he left sm uh, splatterings of blood, oh. which is kind of creepy on yeah. the house. So we had forensics come in and take some samples, oh. do some, run some DNA tests. Yeah. And when I say forensics, I mean some of the actors from CSI. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're looking for those results, and we expect to get them back during sweeps. <laughs> You idiot. So, uh, um, <laughs> so the guy that broke in, now I say it's a guy, I don't want to be sexist, it could have been a woman. Uh -huh. So this bitch took, <laughs> um, <laughs> took some personal things of mine. <laughs> You're so woke, I appreciate that. So um, he took a couple of watches, sentimental, oh. some things that were sentimental to me that didn't take much, kind of in and out pretty quickly. Right. And uh, he took like a watch I'd give him to my father that was engraved on the back, and then a watch that was engraved on the a Cartier watch mm -hmm. uh, from Lorne Michaels after I left SNL. Well, I actually, oh, that's... I took that from Lorne. Right. Yeah, he didn't give that <laughs> so to you me. stole it from Lorne. I Lorne. stole it from him. So you know, uh, but touche. still, that, that's that's got to feel terrible yeah, to have it does. such personal items taken. But and this might sound kind of crazy to you, but the thing that he took that really upset me the most were um, I was good friends with Gary Shandling. I know. And. Um, I got some of his ashes um, that I had in an urn that I wore around my neck sometimes, and that mm -hmm. was in with the watches. So um, he, wait a minute, the thief! Don't tell me the thief took some of Gary took, Shanling's ashes. Yeah. The weird thing about it all is that that Gary Shanling gave me those ashes before he died. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> Isn't that crazy? No, I, I don't even know what that means. How does that happen? <laughs> I mean, that's love. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, this has been a very weird time for all of us. Thank you. People that, no, I said for, <laughs> I said for all of oh, okay, us. Okay, okay, sorry. What I mean is, uh, and, and I think especially it's been very strange for people that routinely go out in front of crowds and entertain. I know that's a big part of your life out there trying to get a laugh. And all of us doing what we can. What are you doing in this downtime? Are you watching stuff? What are you binge watching? Because that's what I've been doing for most of this downtime is binge watching like crazy. Um, I've been watching, uh, I've binge watched just about every show on television. Um, today I was actually binge watching our ring doorbell footage <laughs> from the past few months. And you guess- just, You went through all of it, yeah. Yes, our UPS guy is hilarious. And so actually, I actually saw our, our burglar. Uh -huh. Who is also very funny. He's got oh. a funny walk. I haven't seen his face, <laughs> but- uh, Yes, I've been doing that, mm -hmm. mostly. And uh, I've gotten in, into photography. Oh, that's uh, interesting. How'd yeah. you get into photography? Um, I got a camera. And um, used the one on my phone. Mm -hmm. okay. And I bought some frames. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, basically I've been taking, this is actually, I've been taking provocative pictures of my wife. Oh. And she likes me doing it as opposed to some creepy photographer because she knows that I'm not trying to sleep with her. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> she's right here. The cardboard to, cutouts. She's right are here such having to lappers. listen to this uh, absolute bullshit that you're spewing. <laughs> you're a saint, by the way. Thank you, Conan. You're a saint. I don't know how you put up with this guy because. Um, no one else will. By the way, I've slept with every cutout here. <laughs> <laughs> as a cutout. Yeah, yeah, as a cutout. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, you know, you asked me about what else I've been doing during the pandemic, but I, I, you know, I've been getting into these audio books, and I've been listening to Woody Allen. Uh, his, That's right. Woody Allen came out what was it uh, with his the, audio book. His, it's his biography. Apropos of nothing, it's called. Uh -huh. 
and I hadn't heard him in a while. I started listening to his, his book on tape and he sounded so old. And also I thought he, maybe he might have had a stroke because mm -hmm. he was slurring, it seemed like he was slurring his words. Hmm. And I was telling everybody, I think Woody had a stroke, you know? Yeah. And then I went to my doctor for a physical or something and I played it for him just to get a professional's opinion. And he goes, he definitely has had some kind of a neurological event. Huh. So I just continued telling people Woody had a stroke. And then I realized that I was playing the audiobook at two times slower the speed <laughs> than it was supposed to be. <laughs> so I fired my doctor because uh -huh. I realized he is not very good. Uh -huh. But I continued to spread the rumors. Do you ever think to yourself, Kevin? Always. No. <laughs> no, I always, I never share my thoughts with anybody. <laughs> Do you ever think to yourself, you know, back in the day you were a struggling comic, you know, you were out there yeah, was out working there. so hard just to get noticed and um, how much life is different now? Well, I think you. it's the same for both of us, you know, we both came from nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and we both came from, you know, well, I don't, I don't know that hard we came from, scrabble, salt of the earth. I don't think God we came fearing. from nothing. My father had a very a talk show and I just inherited it. <laughs> <laughs> My father had Late Night with Conan O'Brien when it was on the radio and then I just inherited it. And I was like, oh, father, thank you. You know, I've done this show more times than Andy Richter has. What, what are you talking about? That's not I possible. Think it's true. Probably more you than have, you have. You know what? I will say, I don't know if you remember, Andy, but I think you were there at our first show in 19, on I September was. 13th, 1993. Uh, you were still doing SNL, I think, and you came down and you sat on the I floor. Remember. I came down and sat on the floor right in front of you, on the, like below the desk. I was on the desk at first, but they said, no, you got to go up. Because <laughs> you couldn't see the camera. But you were, you were there it was sitting, for the yeah, first show. I was sitting right there, and you were on there. On the floor, yeah. On the floor, and I was watching, and I saw like every mistake right from there. I watch you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is good. This has been a nice shot in the I arm. I hope you've learned something from our little chat here today. Nothing. I don't think I've ever learned anything from you, but I've always enjoyed you. I enjoy you very much. I really have a good time talking to you. Seriously, I really appreciated everything you've offered me and everybody else. You brought on a lot of young comics on your show, which they were really grateful. I'd always hear people talking, uh, comics saying how they did their first shot on Conan, and that's going to stay with them for the rest of their life. It's a you nice know? feeling. My first shot was with Johnny Carson, you know, so that's what stayed with me. You're more of an afterthought, but still, I appreciate you. I'll take, I will take a backseat to Johnny Carson any day. Now, I'm going to be really serious with you. I think you did a great job. I think you were one of the finest talk show hosts out there because you were different, and you did bring on a lot of people, and you, you created a situation, especially for me, where I felt comfortable and I could try things and be risky, and, um, and, um, and you had an amazing run, and you're not gonna stop, you're gonna be doing podcasts or whatever else. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> Look at the end, you said we're whatever else, like landscaping. <laughs> no, podcasting, I You'll said. You'll be doing something else, a podcast, podcasting. landscaping. I'm gonna focus on landscaping. Uh, Kevin, so nice of you to say that, and sincerely, uh, you're one of the all-time greats, and I'm so grateful that we're friends after all these years. I mean, I've known you after I, all these years since I met right. you at SNL, and you were so nice to me then. I think I met you in 1988. I met you in February of 1988 when I started in SNL, and you and Dana Carvey walked in the room, and right away, you were just uh, a gem of a yeah. fellow to me. So, and you guy, you came on with Conan uh, with uh, Greg. Daniels, mm -hmm. both Harvard graduates, All right. nerdy, okay, kind of googly-eyed. Okay, know. let's wrap this up. <laughs> the point is smelly. Go ahead, wrap it up. Uh, kind Wonderful. Of you said I had insecure, one of the greatest talk shows of all time. Insecure. Let's end on that note. Kevin, I want to thank you for being here. <laughs> Enough of the googly. I never had googly eyes. No, I, I want to thank you for having me here. <laughs> Let's not mix things up. Here. Okay. Um, I want to thank you for You didn't have to have me here. No, I did. But yet you, you kept, went out of your, you, you didn't go out of your way, but. You called and texted every day. Yes. So I but had no choice. You, you made you somebody harassed else me. go out of their way You harassed me, me. And I had to have you on. Kevin Nealon. First of all. God bless. <laughs> I'm ending this. You hate to say goodbye, don't you? Goodbye. <laughs> That's not how you say goodbye. Farewell. You're not I'm even not looking look, at me. I'm not going to look at you You're not anymore. looking at me. Kevin, you've you're meant saying the, goodbye. Kevin, you've Conan, meant the I love you. Me. I love you. And I love you, too. Conan, Take you're care. not looking at me. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>